rest up with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made to fill the hearts which thou hast made O comforter We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Prisoners and friends of St. Mother Teresa, welcome to our Pentecost celebration. The coming of the Holy Spirit gives birth and life to our church and to each one of us. The Spirit has power to forgive, to renew our life. So as we gather, let's take a moment in silence, open our hearts, our minds, to the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, send your Spirit to renew the life of our church. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, send your spirit to reconcile us with one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, send your spirit to renew the face of our earth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gift of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed. Fill now once more the hearts of all believers. 
Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O oh Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your Spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, 
the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, on us shine. Look on the poor with love benign, and give your people gifts divine. Come, Spirit, come. Come, be our soul's most welcome guest, endowing us with all the best. Be solace, comfort, and our rest. Come, Spirit, come. Come, light be with us every day. In prayer, in rest, and work, at play. Without your help, we go astray. Come, Spirit, come. Come, heal sin's wounds and give us grace. All wrong you wish us to erase. All good you call us to embrace. Come, Spirit, come. Come, a paraclete with gifts descend. Through all our life, you are our friend. Come, bring us joys that never end. Come, Spirit, come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when, they, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord.
Today's celebration invites invites us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to live our lives as Christians in the Spirit. This past week, I came across a simple but beautiful story. The story is about an interview with some of the Japanese astronauts. They were asked how they deal with stress while being confined for so long in a small spaceship. One of them said, "The solution is simple. Go inside you." Thanking them, seeing them, experiencing them. Then you will find important answers for how to deal with stress in a situation that's unavoidable. How to, in fact, begin to enjoy stress if you are able to look inside you. To me, this insight. It's very Christian. That's what today's celebration invites us to do: to look inside each one of us. We, as Catholics, Christians, believe we are made in the image of God. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. There is something very special about what is inside each one of us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we have been told throughout the Easter season how the power of the Spirit helped the disciples to be bold, to go out, to teach, to heal, to proclaim, and to unite people. Closer to Jesus, through the same Spirit, when we were baptized, we are given the same power to do all those things. And the Spirit dwells in each one of us, continues to intercede for us, to empower us, to renew us, to sanctify us, to do those works. That Jesus sent his disciples out to do before he ascended to his heavenly Father. How do we know the works of the Holy Spirit? The evidence can be found in the ways how we live our lives. In fact, today's readings offer us three different answers. We know, first of all, the Spirit is alive in us. If we have the gift of understanding, in the first reading, the apostles, the people, were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to proclaim, to speak the word of God. After they received the Spirit, who came to them as a strong driving force of wind, tongues as of fire. When the disciples began to speak, people understood them. They were speaking different languages. But they heard them speaking their own native tongues. That's the power of the Spirit.、It、helps people to understand, to communicate well. And we know how important communication is in our lives, and sometimes how hard it is to understand each other. I know this myself. English is not my first language, so oftentimes I have to repeat myself to help others to hear me. 
But even if English is your first language, you know it. When you talk, others goes like this. Your words might go into one ear of the listeners, then go out through the other. The same language may not be understood by the listener. More than that, the words, the gestures, the customs, and all the different forms of communication make our understanding hard and challenging. The Spirit was able to help empower the apostles to speak a language, a message that touched the hearts of the listeners. They were given the gift of understanding. And isn't this what we need today in our family life, in our community life, in our discipleship? The second evidence of the work of the Spirit in our lives is the spiritual services that we are willing to share with one another. St. Paul says it so well, we have the same Spirit, but each one of us is given a special gift. Then we have the church. Some of us are called to be teachers, others are called to be proclaimers of the gospel, others are called to be musicians, still others are called to be people with technology skills. If we all use our skills for the good of humanity, for the good of our church, then we have a community that's able to live in unity, harmony, and love. In the last few days, we have begun to talk about reopening our church buildings. One of the, war, one of the questions we have pondered, asked, and shared with one another is, what will our church look like after COVID-19? How do you want our church to be when everybody is able to come back to celebrate as a faith community? How does this crisis force us to change? To change in the ways of the Spirit? How does our pastoral activity, our church life, be able to reflect the spirit that works in our church, in each one of us. The third evidence of the work of the spirit from today's readings is forgiveness. Forgiveness. We all, at different times, need to be forgiven and have to offer forgiveness. The gospel story reminds us Jesus first of all greeted the apostles with a message of peace. Then he embraced the anthem, which reminds us in the beginning of God's creation, that's what God did to the first human being. God breathed into the nostrils of the first human being. Then there was life. The same is true in the gospel story. The reason Lord breathed on the apostles and telling them, receive the Holy Spirit. Then sending them out to forgive, to continue his mission on earth. Forgiveness takes two people to do so. The one who is being offended 
and the one who offends the others. A perfect forgiveness has to have both, but sometimes all we can do is to be able to ask for forgiveness or offer forgiveness. The spirit has to work in the other parties to complete. God's forgiveness in us and in our church. So those are a few things we can experience in our lives and be able to see the Spirit is alive, is working in us and in our church. The gift of understanding, the gift of service, the gift of forgiveness and new life. The question for all of us is that: How do we, each one of us, experience the the Spirit in our lives? Personally, this past two and a half months has been a time for me, not only to reach out, try to reach out to our parishioners through new ways. But in fact, to look inside of my heart, my life, to go to my inner heart, inner life, to see if there is peace, there is love, there is joy. Two and a half months, literally, my life was about two worship sites, going back and forth, and going to a few other gro- grocery stores. Like the astronauts who were forced to deal with their stress by looking inside them, I too have had the opportunity and the time to do that. I was amazed. I am. I am amazed how the spirit is working in my life. In the last nine days. I prayed the novena to the Holy Spirit. The prayer I used each day it invites me to ask for one of the gifts of the Spirit: charity, joy, kindness, patience, love, peace, wonder, and awe, understanding. I found it very helpful to be able to see how my heart is. The temple of the Spirit. How my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So today's celebration invites all of us to look inside us, to pray and reflect on the work of the Spirit in us and in our church and in our world. If there is one gift of the Holy Spirit that you would ask for yourself, what is it? If there is one gift of the Holy Spirit that you would beg for our church, what is it? If there is one gift that you would ask the Holy Spirit for our world today, what? Is it? The good news is that we are confident the Spirit is working in us and in our church, in our world. We do not understand with all that's going on now, but we live. The Spirit, giver of life, has power. Somehow, someday, to help us to understand the mystery of what is going on in our world, we believe this is a time of renewal. This is a time of new life. The reopening, the word reopening, also invites us to reopen our lives, our hearts, our spiritual needs, our spiritual. Lives. 
So that's a good news. The Spirit has power to forgive, to help us to serve, to help us to understand. Together we now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that God is with us and God loves us, let's now raise our voices of needs for ourselves and for others into the merciful hands of our Heavenly Father. Our response is, renew the face of the earth. Bestow your gift of wisdom on Pope Francis, Cardinal Supich, all the ordained, especially pastors, and on God's people during this pandemic. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew, renew the, the face of the earth. Grant us your gift of understanding to all elected officials, especially Governor Pritzker and Mary, Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Instill your gift of right judgment in parents and children, employers and employees, custodians of the law and of the courts. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Implant your gift of knowledge in this year's universities, college, high school, and grammar school graduates. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of their earth. Pour forth your gift of wonder and awe on teachers, artists, scientists, and medical personnel, especially those working on cures for the COVID-19 virus. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of their earth. Infuse your gift of courage in our military, in doctors and nurses throughout the world who are caring for COVID-19 patients, in the recent flood victims, especially those in Michigan and Illinois, in our St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta faith community. Lord, Send forth your spirit and renew the face of their earth. For those whom we remember at this Mass, especially health blessings for June Moy, missionaries of charity, Mary Knoll fathers, brothers and sisters, school sisters of Notre Dame, and all essential workers. Birthday blessings for Buddy Cosnoto, and eternal rest for Mike Schimmel, Chuck Oy, 
Juana Lopez, Benedicta Barcinas, Catherine Barbaro, Charles Palumbo, Teresa Bertucci, Pamela Ritchie, Gertrude and Stephen Mergen, Jose and Ophelia Lara, Lauren Mandel, Phyllis Centifanti, Christ John Blesios, Ted and Stan Piorecki, Helen Kubertska, Francis Beyer, Deacon Andy Brongiel, Ed Glabicki, Virginia Pienta, Tess Fortress, and all forgotten souls in purg purgatory. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Accept the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. O Holy Spirit, love of the Trinity, hear the prayers of your faithful people. Empower us to be your missionary disciples and renew the faith of our church and of our earth. We ask all those prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, our good, good of all, His holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice, and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son, this same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts singing together the unending hymn of your glory. As he now acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather all people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain in, we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Barbara, Saint Teresa of the Little Flower, and Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta and with all your sins, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to conform in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and place our bishop, the order of bishops, 
all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O、oh、God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O、oh, glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 We are God's beloved children, united in the Spirit, empowered by Jesus. Let's now raise our voices of petitions and thanksgiving to our Heavenly Father. By praying the words our Savior taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord. We pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of Your mercy, by the help of Your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. The King, power, glory, and glory, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ. Who said to your apostles, "Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever." Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. This week's everyone. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my house, but only see the word I so shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, send down your fire. Come, fill your people, renew and inspire. We are your children who long to see your face. Confirmed in one baptism, one hope, one Lord, one faith. Veni Sancte Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Veni Sancte Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, send down your fire. Come, fill your people, renew and inspire. We are your children who long to see your face. Confirmed in one baptism, one hope, one Lord, one faith. Thank you all for celebrating this wonderful feast, Pentecost, the birthday of our church. Special thanks to all of our ministers here. We as people are the church. After two and a half months being closed, our church buildings will be reopened on this Sunday, May 31st. In our parish, St. Barbara Church, will be reopened from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on Sunday, May 31st, for private prayers and devotions. St. Therese Church will not be opened until further notice. Our prisoners and friends, if you are in good health, you are invited to come to do some personal prayers in our beautiful church. Our leadership team has been trained. They will be here to serve you, to help you, to make sure we follow all the guidelines of the government, of the archdiocese, to do our best to keep everybody safe. So let's continue to pray, continue to meditate, to use our God-given gifts whenever, wherever possible for the good of our families, the good of our church, the good of our world. Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, Safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
summoned by the God who made us rich in our diversity, gathered in the name of Jesus, richer still in unity. Let us bring the gifts that differ, and in splendid, varied ways, sing a new church into being, and love and praise. Let us bring the gifts that differ, and in splendid, varied ways, sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise.